What's happening, guys? Um, the review on this meter, the Aining 8008, awesome meter. I don't know, six, eight months ago. And you can see it does have a whole lot of features. Let's zoom in. So we've got frequency and voltage. And that's for both, um, I can't make my brain work. AC and DC, we have millivolts. We have the resistance scale with diode, capacitance, and a continuity buzzer. We have hertz and duty cycle. We have AC and DC milliamps, microamps, and it has a square wave output. Don't use it on high voltage, you know. Like Aussie Dave says, it'll blow up your wombat or something like that. Well, now we got this. This is the latest updated version, the Anang 8009. Now you can see size-wise they are basically the same. We've gone from a red shell to a uh, orange shell. Auto power off the same on both of them. Range and light the same on both of them. Select and hold is the same. Our connections down here, amps and milliamps, common, and all the other functions are the same. Now let's look at our selectors here. We have off and off, voltage and hertz, millivolts, but on the new 8, 8009, look at that. I don't know if you can see, is it going to focus? There we go. Well, now we've got a temperature reading. How about that? All right, anything else different? So we got temperature, right there. blah, blah, blah. Oh, NCV. You know what that stands for, right? That's a non-contact um, voltmeter, basically. It tells you if your circuit's on or not. So there have been some changes made. And it is reflected in the price. I paid $25 for the new meter. This one I paid $18 for, and you can still find it for $17 or $18 or, or $15 if you can wait four weeks for it to come from uh, China. So let's see what else is in the package. Leads. A thermocouple with an actual probe. Wow, those actually feel like... Uh, silicon wires mm, maybe maybe not maybe they just have me fool but you can see they do have the high voltage protection on the pins so batteries negative screwdriver positive all I gotta do is find it so this is our first uh, review. This screwdriver sucks. This is our first our first review and uh, tear down Friday. Like I said before, that one don't fit neither. Like I said before, if uh, I'm just going to try and keep all this stuff for reviews on Friday. I have enough that I could do reviews almost every day, and that would cause me to not um, make videos about the other stuff we do here. Batteries. So that's why I'm going to limit the reviews to one day a week. I'm not going to throw teardowns in there. We'll have teardowns whenever necessary. Any other suggestions you guys have? I'm definitely will. will, will hey now. I gotta put tab A into slot B. Makes me really good at that in high school. God, my eyes are bad. Okay. So now we should have a functional meter. There we go. I'll take off the old protective covering there. Now, just like his older brother, the 8008, does have a tilting bell but they are not substantial enough for uh, changing settings. They're just good enough to stand it up so you can see the readings. All right, so I have some of the stuff we're gonna be using for testing here. We have our voltage standard, 
Oh, sorry, that's resistance standard. We have a voltage standard. We have a current standard. And we're going to power it off from a battery. So let me get this all set up and we'll see how she does. Where should we start? Voltage, resistance, current, capacity. Where should we go? Current, you say? Okay, we'll do current. So we've got our uh, standard here. Uh, I know, it's not a laboratory grade standard. And if you find the need to measure or source, you know, two microamps, yeah, this ain't gonna do it for you. But if you wanna know if your meter is relatively accurate, Shouldn't have any trouble with this at all. All right, so we're set for 15 milliamps. We'll move our connector over to the amp range. Put her on milliamps there. And what do we get? What do we get? What the hell? Why are we getting nothing? Hmm. Let me do that something up here. We should be getting milliamps. All right, we'll come back to that. What has two thumbs and is an ass or is an idiot? This guy had the wires in the wrong place. So now let's hook it up to our current standard. And we should get about 15 milliamps. Wow, what do you know? 314.7? Yeah, that's close enough to 15 milliamps for me. How about you guys? Bueno, bueno, all right. Next, let's do resistance. And for that, I'm going to grab some different types of leads. Nice heavy-duty BNC leads here that we use to connect to our resistance box. I remember one time these two kids were arguing in my class. And, you know, neither one of them were going to be electrical engineers. Let's just put it that way. And the one kid goes, yeah, well, your mother's a BNC cable. The other one says... Yeah, well, your mother is a banana plug. And he said, no, that's my father. I about laughed my ass off. All right, let's start with uh, one meg. One mega ohm. Interesting. And one mega ohm. Close enough. All right, next we'll do 1K. Pretty darn close. 2.2 .2 ohms. These are the ones that are hard. These low ones. 2.2. 2.32. I'll take it. And finally, 10K. This one's set up for four wire. But we're just going to measure two. Yeah. Man, that's, that's plenty enough accuracy for any home shop. Just all discombobulated this morning. All right, we're going to do voltage. We're going to use our little voltage standard with the AD584LH chip. And we are going to start at the lowest point, which uh, you guys can read that. I doubt it. I'm working on lighting. Don't worry. It says 2.5 volts. So we'll hook up the negative. And then we'll hook up the positive. 2.505. Yeah, that's definitely acceptable. All right, we'll switch our jumpers up to 5 volts. And check that one. 5.012, perfectly acceptable. 7.5. Once again, no worries. And finally, 10 volts. Yep. 
is 10 volts. Beautiful. Okay, next up we'll check capacitance. So put it in this range, and we'll select. See a little NF there from nanofarad. This is a 150 microfarad uh, multi-layer ceramic. Oh, that's, hold on. Yeah, 225. Sorry. Getting the old brain. And uh, here's a 2200 microfarad electrolytic. You want to make sure you have your pro uh, polarity correct when you hook these guys up. 22. What's she read? What's she read? Two point one millifarad, which would be twenty one hundred and a half micro. So good. Everything seems to be. Oh, we have one more thing to check. Actually, well, let's do the non-contact voltage thing. EF. All right, class. What's EF stand for? Electric field. And it is a. Uh, read out on this meter with a series of dashes it said you guys see that okay so that is our non-contact voltage that's your save your ass circuit here's a secret assume everything is hot and act accordingly You know, a couple years ago at school, I was bored, and I could take any classes they offered for free. So I took welding classes and got certified in stick, MIG, and TIG. And the one thing I learned really fast is, just assume all metal is always hot. Okay. Temperature goes here. And we'll put it in temperature mode. Why are we at Fahrenheit? Okay, it says it is 78 degrees Fahrenheit in here. I don't have my air conditioning on. The thermostat on the wall says 73. So, be a little off. That's more the thermocouple than it is the meter. So is that it? I'm missing anything? Oh, okay. You want me to take them both apart so we can see what they look like on the inside? Okay. <laughs>